Okay. All right. Um, for mine, I was going on a three-day journey uh, coast to coast, and uh, starts off in New York, a uh, fictional town called The Past, and goes through present Texas, and it winds up in the future California. So, on this coast to coast journey, I chose to bring with me three people. Uh, the three people I chose to bring were James W. Fannin, the commander of OEI. I chose to bring my grandmother, who I never had the opportunity to meet, and Greg Fannin. And pardon me, I'm going to get there with this one. For my fictional character, I chose to bring Jesus Christ. Now, on this road trip, we start off in the past. James Fannin is one of my distant cousins. Uh, he moved to Texas in 1834. And uh, he fl actually plunked out of West Point. And so after he had plunked out of West Point, he came over to Texas and I wound up settling down with a woman out of two kids. A uh, woman's name was Maribel. Uh, he was the son of an illegitimate doctor. Um, he had medical training, so he was made colonel. And he was the only member of the Texas Army to have West Point training. He was the only, also the only one that had the distinction of being um, the least competent ranking officer in the Texas Army as well. So um, basically what had happened to him is um, he was a little bit outside of Goliad and he had chosen to surrender. And after the surrender, a CNN had ordered for all rebels to be executed. So I got just about all this information from an interview with my dad because he's gone through extensive research of a lot of our family. And um, he was helped by a woman uh, known as the, um, uh, I'm sorry about that. He was helped by a woman known as uh, the Spanish Angel, or the Angel of Golia. She was a, a Spanish woman. And uh, whenever he had surrendered, he had given up uh, his gold watch and asked that they not shoot him in the face, and they shot him in the face. So um, his execution violates the rule of war, which I had the opportunity to learn. Um, my military ethics class that's with my freshman year and so my advice to being that we were still in the past is why would you surrender to be executed instead of fighting to the death or possible victory so being that he was ordered uh, executed by Sierra Mahana we move on to the presence anyway um Anne was my dad's mom and uh, I never met her because she died of cancer um, before I was born. Uh, she's significant to me because she taught my dad compassion and that he passed it on to me. So I feel like that's very um, relevant to my present and is also a present, like a gift. So uh, basically a little bit about her, um, she she also had like some uh, historical lineage. She had a, her great-great-grandpa was the uh, row in the boat across the Delaware River, uh, River with George Washington, and therefore she had actually become a daughter of the American Revolution. And she's a great, great uh, niece of Henry Clay, who was a, she was from Kentucky, so you know, he was a Kentucky senator, and uh, known as the Great Compromiser, and a big influence on Abraham Lincoln as well. Um, her dad was um, George Keene Gray, and uh, again, they were of uh, Kentucky, and uh, they owned a thoroughbred racing company. This is all information, of course, that she told me while we were on the road trip. Um, but really, I was interviewed by my dad. I uh, interviewed him. Um, so anyway, uh, they owned the um, they owned the uh, thoroughbred racing um, spot in Kentucky as well that uh, participates in the Kentucky Derby. So uh, basically what I gotten out of this is that my grandpa was a third generation Aggie. Uh, his freshman year actually they won the national championship with how long ago that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they met at uh, Fort Knox uh, and she was barely 18 and so he had was actually a tank commander and went over to Germany and was uh, teaching kids how to track tanks and uh, she was over here. So what my dad had basically just summed up was that um, She's from very, like, a line of successful people. She's very humble. Um, and so that's what I think I need to take to my present and to my future. So now that we're going into the future, uh, my next person is uh, Jesus Christ. Again, I didn't want to put anybody in my soda at first because I used to be an atheist. And I, I feel very strongly that there's three ways of looking at something. And you start off being naive, and you reject it, and you come back around. And so... Being that I come back around, 
he was somebody that was fictional to me one time, and then it came back to become real on this journey over three days, being past, present, and future. So, during our combo, he basically just summed up that uh, I was actually making progress, and he was surprised. And he just taught me to be more accepting of different people's ideas and uh, beliefs. So, in conclusion, central idea is the three-day journey through the past, present, and future. And the main points are never to surrender, but to look compassion. Thank you.